morning, beautiful people. My name is Hilary, and I'm taking over from Catherine for a while because she's away on leave. I'm honored to be at Victoria Courts, where I have a lovely couple here, Gabriel and Vera. We've always met on the streets and at events, but I didn't know I would be the first one to interview them for having launched their book. So, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Tell us more about yourself, first of all, so that for those who may not know you. I know you, but not everybody knows you there. My name is Vera Umocha Dinda. I am a writer, I am an author, I am a blogger, a, a book reviewer, I am a student of literature, and I'm married to this guy over here, Gabriel. Uh, my name is Gabriel Dinda, and I'm tempted to leave it at the point of I'm Vera's husband. <laughs> <laughs> That's an introduction. For the, um, for the purposes of this, I'm a writer by passion, and um, I'm the team leader at Writers Guild Kenya, an incubation center for writers. It believes that writing and reading can be used as a tool of social good, a tool to do good. So we encourage people to embrace that, and I think that is partly the reason we are here. Nice. So you guys have written two books, Diary of Amiaha, or is it Maya? It's in, it's in the Luo, so it's Mia, right? Yes. And Questions of My Youth. And then you guys launched it together last year in December. Right. In right? So, who, like, how did you guys go about this? Like, did you tell each other, you go first? Or, like, how, how was this? How did you guys end up here? He's the idea first. <laughs> <laughs> he came up with the idea, but um, we were writing at different times, though. And Gabriel suggested that uh, since you are doing this book and I am also doing this book, of course, something that I already knew, and he suggested, how about we launch them together? At first I was a little hesitant, how will that play out, you know, the logistics and organizing for the launch. Uh, but then we thought, yes, let's give it a try. The launch went well, maybe. I, I followed it up. So before I go far, Gabriel requested to read something. Your lovely ladies. Let me uh, grant you that. This book, um, maybe more background behind the reason of launching them together was to celebrate our one year of love and marriage. So we got uh, we, our wedding was in 2018, November 3rd, and we had wished to launch it on November 3rd, 2019, to celebrate one year of our love. But due to other logistics, we were only able to launch it a month later. So. Uh, symbolically, it was meant to celebrate our marriage. We wanted to celebrate our marriage in a way that both of us would be uh, happy about, because we are book people and we are we talk books, and the only way to celebrate uh, them was through books. I had wished to read something, um, a dedication which I made to Vera through this book, uh, to the love of my life. Towards your individual goals and wishes, I will support you. To realize your worth, I will work with you. To make you feel worthy, as the woman you are, I will respect you. Uh, to give you the space to always reinvent yourself, I will understand you. To enable you to be the best mother of them, I will try to be the best father of them. Uh, to enable you to create a peaceful home, I will be the peace negotiator. Uh, to do parts of God's delegated work to watch over you, I assure you of my availability. Um, to count on the smiles regardless of the prevailing situations, I will be the source of them. To expect the sweet aroma of spices from the kitchen, I will be the gardener. To ensure the pink dim light of the bedrooms never fade, I will replace the bulbs. Uh, to keep God in his place right between us, I will pray for you. I love you. Better. Oh, nice. Hey, boy child, hey, boy child has lines. <laughs> That's what you get from marrying a writer. Many writers are, are like the best guys to get married, right? Yes. <coughs> so let's begin with, <coughs> excuse me, with Vera's book. Mia is Luo, right? Yes. But then, in Luo it means a recently married woman. But there's an English version to the same word, which is Maya instead. The same way it's written, but it means 
a young beautiful woman something like that so I'm, I'm wondering like was it did you come with the title from the english perspective first then made it into luo or did you come with it from the luo perspective that's that's why there is uh, the explanation that mia is uh, the, the luo word meaning a recently married woman and I, it was actually proposed by gabriel and we thought it fits uh, the content of the book and it's it's just on the, the, the Luo version. It's actually later that I came to realize. I just Googled and realized there is an English version of it with close, with a close meaning, but uh, not the same. I think also the, 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 the word uh, confirms our fears that English copied from Luo. <laughs> <laughs> so it took from us. So um, I think your fears are now confirmed. but. The, we, we, were, we took many days looking for a title eh, of the book and all along we've always wished to be unique, to be a little bit mysterious. So when we had a lot of ideas regarding the title which we could pick and we landed in this, I thought it was interesting because first, um, uh, Vera is a recently married wife and in, in Luo community we treat our wives very well. Yeah? And that is something that um, we are very proud of. So, when normally when Amiaha is in the home, uh, you know, you will have to find ways to treat them well. So, even if it means selling land or taking loads, then we are not very familiar with those, but you just find ways to treat them well. So, I thought now, like in, ca in the case of a book, what better way would it be to treat Amiaha? than to help them put their story together to remember many years from today. So that is a little background of the diary of Emiaha. Ah, nice. Now to your book. You have so many questions. Like, like I'm wondering, how does your mind hold all these questions? <laughs> so let me ask this, eh? Of all the questions you have about life and about relationships, how many of those have been answered by her since she came to your life? Well, she's attempting to answer some, <laughs> but I'm unable to quantify how many. Um, but she's answering them, some of them. She's answering some of them. But I'm truly a troubled man, as you might have seen from the book. I walk around town, I walk around villages, I see things, I see contradictions, and I ask myself questions. Eh? I look at it, um, some questions which sometimes I, f I, I, I feel I'm not very comfortable to ask. I just ask weird questions. Which is the best, um, which is the best age for someone to die? When is, is it when you're 30? Is it 70? Is it 100? Is it 120? Is there an optimal age where you can die? Where does our time go? We all have 24 hours in a day, but how come some people manage to achieve more with it and others nothing with it? Where does it go? Some people say they're too busy to pray. Where is the time to pray? And what of those people who pray on a daily basis? Where do they get the time to pray? Is it extended for them? Um, I have many questions. And as you have seen from the, 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 the blab, I'm a very troubled man. I see. What is the meaning of enjoying life? Is it that when you are drunk and you are falling down everywhere in town and risking your life? Is that enjoying life? What is the meaning of enjoying life? I just look at some of these things, life's contradictions and life's uh, occurrences, and I end up with questions and no answers. And I hope I invite the readers to help me answer them. So I noticed another thing, eh? like both books have so much border, border on God, like you talk about God, he talks so much about God. Did you people come together, each individual spiritually filled, or did one of you change the other, like, you know, like, like you marry someone and you're like, no, 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 you are not very right with God, Let, let's go this side. Yeah, like how did it happen? Was there one who was slightly out of the equation and was brought back? Or how did it happen? Well, I would say we are both Christians. 
and uh, you were, of course, Christianity or the essence of being a Christian is a constant struggle you know, with faith, uh, with uh, matters of faith and life and balancing them. But I, I think individually we had our struggles as well. Not uh, to mean that we were on opposite sides of the divide. You know. uh, our only difference was that he was uh, Catholic and I was an Adventist. So imagine the two. That's what I talk about in my book. But we agree on the basis of where we draw our values from. Of, you know, we agree essentially about God and his existence and his uh, believing in the existence of God. Yeah. I think maybe to chip in, in that is you see a lot of God in both books because you see there is a lot of God in you or in us as human beings. Actually, there is not a lot of God. There is, in my view, everything. And if you just look around, if you just walk out here, it will not take you a minute or so before you see God in something. So you see God in everything. The order you see in, our, in, our, in the universe and every other thing. So in my view, this is not something extraordinary. It is just reflecting on who we are, because as human beings, I believe and we believe that we have the constant desire for God, which um, sometimes maybe we suppress, but it is there. Whether we suppress it, whether we notice it, it is there. So I think it is just a reflection of reality of who we are. I noticed something in your book, eh? where you, you come open and say, you're actually very vulnerable about yourself in this book. That was, that was wonderful. Where you say you struggle to actually tell people, this is my husband, I I'm married. And I'll make a confession, by the way. There's a day we met at a conference in Westlands. Yes. At a it was a publisher's conference, yes. right? Yes. I didn't know you people were a couple by then. By the oh. way. Yeah. It's until we went for lunch yeah. that I saw him feeding you. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. when I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> what am I missing here? So, yeah, yeah it, it, I realized, I, I've experienced that actually, like one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> and I'll tell you from experience, I'm a father to one, and m my son is called Milan. I've been married for almost a decade now. But interestingly, it's easier to call me Hillary than Baba Milan. Like, like if you call me Baba Milan, I, <laughs> yeah, it takes too long to <laughs> click. It's me who's being called. Yeah. So yeah, I, I like that bit. I don't know how you are doing so far after like a year. <laughs> well, I, I would say that, you know, it's always looked so natural that uh, you, you find someone, you get married, and you're happily married, and then you have struggles, you know, the, the normal phases of life or married life. life. Uh, but I, I really, now getting to the ground, I realized that the thing was actually very different in the sense of even accepting myself now as a married woman, you know? And and my, my body, of course, doesn't help it. <laughs> so I, it was just like, by the way, um. If I am with him, maybe at public places, it's just always easier that uh, you find out on your own that we are married. Not that I don't love him, but the aspect of, you know, I shouldn't walk around and say, oh, by the way, this is my husband, you know, or it doesn't come as easier. I don't know, maybe with time it will, but just the transition from, I've always known myself as me, Vera, you know. I've always been a young girl, growing, transitioning, uh, but then this is a major shift uh, change, so just getting used to, to that idea. Gabriel, how are you doing on that front? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm not doing any better. <laughs> uh, because every time, well, I think it is also just what Vera has rightly said, transition. Um, <laughs> Maybe you've experienced it even in other areas of life where maybe you move places where you're staying and you still find yourself going to the previous stage. <laughs> so when we are in public places, 
not any reservations. I would wish to introduce as my wife, but then I don't know why in my mind I have to make some calculations. So I say, Vera, oh, my wife. <laughs> it takes some time. And even when someone tells me, oh, say hi to your wife. Oh, really? I'm married. Then I just get to it. Oh, I'm married. Then I'll, so I'll say hi to her. Yeah. So I think it is, we are in that transition period. But also maybe just to, just to, it denotes how, how huge a shift it is, I, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, change of status. I, mean, I, I think even maybe, uh, even maybe other, let's say politicians who are elected and now everyone is calling it His Excellency, I think they take time to get to it. I think it is a natural phenomenon. Nice. Now, another thing that appears in both books is the scar that Gabriel has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe you didn't realize that, but I saw. <laughs> I remember. And I realized, because I also saw that scar, but until I read the book, then I didn't know the source of that scar. But what I, what I got from reading was that, you see his scar is visible. Mm -hmm. And unless you know the story, then you would never really know this scar, what was the source of this scar. So most of us carry scars, some visible, others are internal. Mm -hmm. But most of the time we judge people based on seeing the scar but never the story yeah so i don't know like how what how how do you guys take that scar? because it, it's being seen as a sign of strength rather than you know an accident mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's it's a very personal story to him so i'd let him well, go on that um question number 42 the scar on my face. Mm -hmm. If we met on 13th July 2018, my face would not be having a scar. Uh, it would be, as most people have known me since childhood. For those who first saw me after this date, it is near, it is nearly impossible to convince them that my forehead was once without a scar, and that's the reality of life. Um, rightly, if you met, if we met on 13th July 2018, I, I didn't have a scar. So I was involved in a road accident on 14, the night of 13, uh, when I was traveling home uh, to, to, to go to Vera's place. So I was traveling overnight and uh, I think somewhere in Tulele, in Narok, the vehicle rolled and I became the casual, one of the casualties that. So that is the source of this car uh, and others which are not visible. But, uh, are also part of the same. So yeah, that is the source of this car, and um, uh, yeah, I think that is that is <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> you see, the thing about writing is, writers tend to have a platform to share things that other people would ordinarily not have. And the problem is, almost every individual has a book inside them, just that not everybody has the ability to write. So I do not know. So I do not know how we can try make the people who who have books inside them, but they do not know how to bring those books out. I don't know. Like like, like how do we plug into this system so that we have more books? Because your scar is a testimony. There are many other people who have scars, not not necessarily like that one, but the scar tells a story about maybe their background. You, like most times you find. A child who is a bully in school is not a bully because he was born a bully. There's a story to that child being a bully. Not until you get to learn this, that child's story, you would never really understand why the child behaves that way. So I don't know how, as writers, we can plug into society to try use our art, you know, to just tell people stories. Yeah. Uh, if we talk about um, talking about uh, this story, my story was not the easiest of experiences or it was not something that came naturally or something I in my comfort zone would have done but then I go to that space of uh, sharing my story you know emotional I, I don't have physical uh, scars but I do have emotional scars and I, I, I trace this like why do I react in this manner it's I realize there is a root somewhere you know 
of what happened to me as a child and how does that reflect in my life now how does it spiral on to my husband so i, I realized that progressively as i kept uh, writing this book and sharing my stories some are just segments some are just you know i just mentioned in passing i realized the strength and the power there is in sharing your story you know uh, people relate with me better because uh, they, they feel like oh I have been there or I've been close to being where you were I have these experiences actually most a, a lot of uh, ladies young ladies have reached out to me and say you know I have this experience I was raped at this age I I have these struggles and I, I don't trust men so but I don't have the strength to share this story or what what will people think you know there is always that question as well when it comes to sharing stories but for me it's a way to liberate yourself it's it's a path to growth and to even acknowledging you know some sometimes we also we acknowledge physical scars more than we do emotional so uh, we likely Gabriel finds it easier to talk about his scar than than a girl finding it easy to to tell a rape story for instance yeah, yeah. actually uh, just weighing in on that that is a, an area where we are very passionate about we believe that part of the reason god brought us together in the form of marriage is probably to serve our purpose which is to guide writers as far as we can see it now to guide writers and create this conversation regarding reading and writing and that question relates to that a bit um in many cases if i asked you for instance but too bad you're a writer if i asked someone that do you think your story is worth telling the the most automatic answer they'll tell you is no then you ask what is the nature of a story that is worth telling then they'll tell you ah you know maybe government official you must have achieved and what is the definition of achieving then they get to a point when they'll be stuck. I think we've gotten to that this point where we've been conditioned and we've been told that you know some stories are not worth telling. You see for instance Vera's book. If you go to the market, you will probably not find many books of of Niaha. In fact, in many communities in Kenya, Niaha has not even learned the way of living in that specific area. They don't know what are they saying. So this story in itself is a defiance or this book is a defiance to what we know it is like a child when you write a book and you introduce yourself that hey I'm an author of this book of it they look at you maybe they may not tell you but they may look at you and say what do you have to say but this is now in if you read this book and there are so many reviews that you receive especially on this book it will let tell you that even mia has something to say even a child uh, your young boy has something to say we have something to say at each stage in our lives but now the the realization or just being sensitive to know that i have something to say and i should say it i think that is our own doing but when you look at other cultures the books do not necessarily you know autobiographies or biographies do not necessarily have to be of famous people you can write about a watchman or say maybe doing something but in a unique way something we all have stories and the stories are all around us so our plea and our persuasion is just to encourage people to look around them don't wait to get to 80 to write your story you can do it in bits when because the, there is also a trap of life when you when you get past a certain age or past a certain experience you tend to forget what you underwent but again the joy of it is if you captured it or if you wrote it then when you look back it even helps you to reflect it helps you to trace back so there is so much happening in our lives which we need to capture and that is what we encourage people at writers guild and everywhere everywhere else write your story and do not wait for a specific time this is it so that's why i believe mia has have something to say a, a very little child have something to say just like guidance even young parents have something to say and we should say it now and i think it's also about sharing basic experiences you know just sharing stories so i i shared this story of um, we had uh, a chicken from sent from home 
and we are looking at each other who, who should slaughter this chicken because I do not know how to slaughter chicken and he says he doesn't know he has never slaughtered a chicken oh, when I expected good. him to do it <laughs> so it's just sharing the, the, the little bits the, the mm. stories which do not necessarily have to be you know uh, impactful in, mm. in that sense yeah. Because there are other people that Gabriel who can't slaughter chicken. Yeah, and I was very surprised. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, he excels in other areas. Oh, yes. Thanks. So we're going to take a short break and we shall come back with more stories about Dario of Amiaha and questions from Gabriel's youth. <laughs> Keep it locked. <laughs> 